big screen, you know. Okay. And this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about IMAX. Oh, why are we talking about IMAX today? Well, because we uh, we went uh, we actually we went to see Tron in IMAX. We went to see the Pirates on uh, Stranger Tides in IMAX. And we, there is a there's a, a lot of difference between both between a, a straight theater and an IMAX theater. Well, a part of it is most of you are familiar with IMAX, not necessarily because of 3D, but because of IMAX. And you've always heard that's an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, a better quality, because they're taking almost the same quality picture that you'd use to shoot with 70 millimeter film, mm -hmm. and they're putting it in a screen, they're basically designing a theater to look at a 70 millimeter print in, which we will explain as we get down to this up. Basically, it's a motion picture film format and a set of proprietary cinema projection standards created by the Canadian, Canadian IMAX Corporation. It has the capacity to record and display images of far greater size and resolution than conventional film systems. And since uh, 2002, uh, many feature films have been upconverted to IMAX format for display in IMAX theaters, and some have been partially shot in IMAX. I mean, I've seen them go back, and uh, you know, it's just like everything. Uh, if you shoot on one size print, you can change it over, or if you do a digital print, you can change it over with no problem. Some people are using digital cameras. They think that's uh, more or less what George Lucas is now using a digital camera, so he can he can uh, go across the spectrum. But uh, uh, comparison between 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter is what you used to use on a, on your t your cameras with a 35 millimeter print, and um, and a 70 millimeter negative. A 70 millimeter would be like the 120 you were using. You know that the picture instead of being like this, it would be like that. So. Uh, it's more widely used system for special venue presentations. That, you know, as of March, there were 528 IMAX theaters in 46 countries. So when you say, when a movie, for instance, like um, Miley Cyrus's one movie made 40 some million dollars at the IMAX, it's really a big deal. That's movie. really a big deal. Yeah, because it's, because virtually, it's virtually impossible to make a ton of money at IMAX. Well, part of it is there's not as many theaters in IMAX than compared to the regular theaters, right? Yeah. You know, we have a, <laughs> an, an empty IMAX theater. The desire to increase the visual effects of film had a long history. In 1929, Fox introduced Fox Grand, the first 70 millimeter film permit, film permit, but it quickly fell from use. The 50 Cinemascope, Vista Vision, widen screen from 35 millimeter, following multi projector systems such as Cinerama, which has actually been around since 1952. Most people didn't realize. Oh, really? But impressive, Cinerama was difficult to install, and scenes between the adjacent projected images were difficult to hide because the Cinerama basically had three cap, three projectors here, here, and here, and you see lines where they couldn't uh, match them up. Hmm. So, uh, what it was, it was developed by Graham Ferguson, Roman and Curator Robert Kerr, and William Shaw. <laughs> not that Shaw. Oh, I know. When you said that, I thought it was. No, not, not, not the Shaw that basically got in Jaws. Different Shaw. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, basically, uh, during the Expo 67 in <laughs> Montreal, port tours in the labyrinth and Ferguson's man in the popular region, older regions, used both multi projector and multi screen systems. Each encountered technical difficulties, allowed them to found a company initially called Multi Screen with a primary goal of designing and developing a simpler approach. Uh, based upon a novel rolling loop film transport technology purchased from an Australian inventor, uh, Ronald Jones, it became clear that a single large screen format had more impact than a multiple small ones. Multi screen changed its name IMAX because, uh, like I said, um, I went there in the beginning of uh, Cinerama. Basically, it was a pain in the ass. I mean, uh, you'd have a picture, you have one projector shown here, one projector shown here, and one projector there, and you'd try to merge the things in oh. together. It never worked. When they, you know, so I, I do know that what happened was some of the people got around it by making a, a, an anamorphic lens which basically wrapped around so you didn't have that problem Cinerama after a while. But the older Cinerama is like how the West was one, it's three, it's got here, here, and here. Oh, that's look at, so. mm. I also have seen Cinerama movies, uh, basically like, like Hallelujah Trail, that basically dumped the Cinerama and basically wanted a single picture because it oh. didn't. It took, a, it took an outdoor thing and really crapped it up, so... Mm. Uh, up, here we got that. The first IMAX film was Tiger Child at Expo 7 in Osaka, Japan. The uh, first permanent IMAX was at the Cinesphere in Ontario, 
Palace in Toronto, Ontario Place in Toronto, and it's still operation. Basically, uh, it was a large screen that measured 90 foot by 60, 90 by 65 millimeters, which is 230 by 13 feet, was featured in the U.S. Pavilion. You know, that's, that's what I used to think of IMAX as, was these god-awful, massive screens that you stand and you go look like, ooh, you'd be sitting there and the thing would go up to, up to the top of the building. Mm -hmm. But they sort of, as we know, they don't do that anymore. Because we've been in two brand new IMAX theaters. So, uh, basically five million people viewed it. This created a sensation. An IMAX 3D theater also uh, is an operation in the formal, former Expo 67 site of the Montreal Science Center. So, hmm. you know, and, uh, basically the, the we got it, one of the original ones, basically the same thing doubles as a, as a planetarium. We got a 3D theater was built in Vancouver for the Expo 86 and yeah. used until 2009. So. I always remember when I was young, the ones at Disneyland where you go in there. Was that considered an IMAX where you were standing in the little room and they projected it all around? Uh, okay, that was the Disney, Disney World? Yeah, that Disneyland. was an IMAX. Disneyland. Yeah, that was the... Uh, you go in the middle of the room and then you sit the That was what you originally considered to be IMAX, but they don't do that anymore. I mean, they basically just put it there because I can remember you could go... I mean, you look know, all the way around and you'd almost get motion that sickness was, watching that's it. That's what most people considered. It never was really IMAX. They, they basically had... There's like a, people think... Uh, a lot of people my age call a copy a Xerox. Well, Xerox basically did very little copies, but because they were the first, and it was different because the screens, you know, you sat there and you could sit there and see the guy. See, I, the, it's over in China exhibit is what it was. It's like there. Uh, the second, uh, they have 25 IMAX studios located throughout the country, and basically because the people like to see China. They like to see film done about China on this big, wide screen because uh, unlike the United States, most of the people in China have never seen a country. It's too big. Um, basically, we got that uh, entertainment film. The IMAX comes in, in two formats. It comes in straight and it comes in 3D. Right now, 3D is popular, as we both know. But there's a huge difference in 3D glasses in an IMAX versus a 3D glass in a regular theater. The IMAX is, is like this, mm -hmm. whereas a 3D can be like this. They can be, like the glasses she's on can be a 3D glass. Yeah, but the IMAX ones, I mean, they're like bug eyes. Yeah, like bug eyes. They're like enormous sunglasses. So because you're, what you're seeing is going on so much around you, so. Um, uh, basically, uh, the expansive logistics of producing and presenting IMAX has led to approximately 40 minutes shorter running times than most conventional movies, which is basically no. This is new and it's no longer true, folks, because we're looking at one IMAX movie after another IMAX movie after another IMAX movie. There's there's not enough IMAX theaters to put the IMAX movies in right now because um, we had um, we had Thor followed by uh, we had uh, we, we had the Fab Five followed by Thor followed by uh, Pirates followed by Green Lantern and they're all within a couple. They're you know two weeks and you're out two weeks and you're out because there's not enough the IMAX theaters to run the movies now. But, but it uh, is entirely a different experience. Yeah, you know, basically, uh, 1991 was the first time they actually did an entertainment, pro a real entertainment thing with Rolex. Oh, Club. really? Yeah. Uh, 85 minute computation of concert footage filmed in IMAX for the, for the, from the band's 1990 Steel Wheels tour. But since 1990, basically, okay, like the people have seen the shorts, the T-Rex movies and the dinosaur movies, the thing like you see over on, you know, Walking with the Dinosaurs. That's just complimentary, so. But um, Haunted Castle, The Old Man in the Sea become the first IMAX animated film. And it actually won an Oscar, folks. Mm -hmm. like, the uh, same year Disney produced Fantasia 2000, the first full-length animated feature initially released in the IMAX form. The uh, first 2D live action IMAX entertainment, Young Black Stalin, in, in, in a late 2003, because like I said, IMAX started out as a 2D, not a 3D. And for some reason, people think that IMAX is all 3D today. It's not. They shoot, they do show 2D entertainment done on IMAX. I mean, I think they're, um, they got a Sting concert coming up in IMAX. So they don't realize you do live events in IMAX too. So, you know. 
Okay, we go up the I don't know. Okay, here the IMAX format is generically called 1570 film. They refer to 15 pockets per frame. The film's bulk requires platter for their conventional film rolls because it sits like this. Not like this, but like this. They take the big thing and set it down. But I can guarantee you, I know that IMAX is going to digital. Mm -hmm. so they? They're going to digital, so there will be no film roll set down. You've got to have a, because the theater we're at uses, uh, uses hard drives to put films on. And that material is sent from the company's distribution place over the internet, loaded there. And then, it, just then it, uh, when the film is done showing, it's, it's basically destroyed. Mm. So that's, yeah, there's no copies of the film available because it's not a film. Feature film basically no longer really exists anymore. It's not, it's not on film. No, it's on a disc. And no matter what you use, it more than likely on a digital disc. I mean, you may shoot it with what looks like a motion picture camera, but there's this little, but we saw people over at CES. Well, you know, you, yeah, you made me think about it. It's like, they always call it a feature film, yeah. right? Now it's no longer going to be on film, but I doubt it'll change the name of it. No, they won't change the name of it. This film has film. been almost synonymous, like a feature film or feature movie. Yeah. When it, it actually refers to two different things. Yeah, because uh, we know we know uh, major, major organizations that basically have the old, you know, the old, what looks like the old style video camera, and they're not putting film in it. They're not putting the videotapes in it. They're putting a card in the side. We've seen them walk around, you know, like they, you know, you know, it's like you basically have to sign your life away to put a, a what is it, a thousand dollar card in the side of your camera. And some guy goes to each crew to pick up the things and gives them a brand new card. So um, that's you, it, it, that's what the thing is. I mean, feature film is actually on the way out. And because digital can do so much more and it costs so much less. Mm. And because, you know, you don't, the American Society of Cinematographers basically is on the way out because uh, the cameras are becoming more and more uh, camera friendly. So you don't have to worry about that. But um, like IMAX platters range from 1.2 to 1.8 meters, which is nearly six foot in size, folks. That's A flatter big. that big. Yeah. That's big. And you see why. They're going to the digital versus that because you have to have trays in an IMAX room that it's you know it's three foot that direction, three foot this That's direction. That's huge. It's too big. So uh, and it, it can weigh. Uh, okay, let's put it this way: uh, it, it, the film can weigh 500 pounds. Oh my god! Imagine gosh. loading. Okay, imagine what happens if it comes off the roll. The oh roll, my god! And you got to get 500 pounds of film up. No. Uh, here's here's what here's one too though, which is basically uh, what is used. Set, well, the United States is the only country in the world that actually records the film, records the sound. Oh.